Today, we're going over array manipulation functions. In fact, the six that we just added into the platform to help you with your workflows. So let's go ahead and get started and show how really easy it is. Now, I have an array input here of an integer. It's just going to be one, two, and three. I also have a products table. So our products here, we're going to be using a list. It's going to output ID, created at name, price, and stock quantity. For the most part, we're going to be focusing on this array here. Now, let's go ahead and get started with our first, the mapping. I'll go to add function, data manipulation, arrays, and then scroll down to map. You'll see map, partition, group by difference, intersection, and union, the six new ones that we just added. Now, they have very easy to follow descriptions that paint a pretty good picture of how you can use them, but let's go ahead and demo them. So here is our map. We're going to transform each element using this function. We'll go ahead and pass in just that array. That's our input. And we have an output type we can select. It's an array of values of what we're passing in or an array of objects. Now, we're just going to keep it the array of values. We also have access to the this and the index keywords. The this represents the current value or the current item. If it's an object, the entire object, or if it's a primitive such as one, two, or three, it'll be, well, one, two, or three. The index represents the position that we're in in this particular function as it loops through. So we'll be able to demonstrate this by going ahead and mapping our this value. We'll go ahead and add a filter and we'll concat. I'm going to go ahead and make that value the index and I'll have a separator of dash. So when I go ahead and save this and run this, what we should see is one dash zero because, well, we're mapping the index to the value we're at. So one dash zero, two dash one, and here we go. So we've mapped our array. And it's a pretty simple demonstration, should be powerful enough to show you how you can manipulate the values within your array without having to add a loop in your function stack and do any crunching. It's all here in these functions. Now, let's go to our next function. This is one of my favorites. It's under data manipulation arrays, and we're going to be dealing with the partition, which accepts an expression, something that evaluates to true or false. If it's true, it's placed into a true bucket. If it's false, it's placed into a false bucket. Now, what's that look like? Well, let's go ahead and pass in our array. Now we can add an expression here, just like we can in the conditional and elsewhere, where we'll say the this value, the one, the two, the three, we'll say one it needs to be less than three. So we should expect the true bucket to have two values and our false bucket to have one. We'll go ahead and make sure that we're updating our response to x1, click save and run it. True for one and two and false for three. So we can go ahead and partition these values and then use them in our workflow. I keep saying I love these functions, but I really do. If we go to the next one, we'll go to our arrays, we'll scroll down and find our group by. Group by works the same way, of course, and accepts an array. Now for this, we'll be using the products array. What we have the option to do is group values based off of keys. So I can go ahead and say this. And what if I wanted to group it by the stop quantity? Simply just write out the stop quantity, save, and then click run, where now I can see that I've grouped by quantity. The key has been changed to that quantity value. So nine, that's going to be the stock quantity nine. There's one item within this array. We can go ahead and keep collapsing them until we find an item that actually has a group. So two items within the stock quantity of 63. So we can see a Blu-ray player and a TV. We can continue on further until we find more. And this is the grouping. Now, you can also use expressions or things that evaluate to true or false. So I can add a filter here and I'll type in less than find my less than and I'll say less than 50. Now we can expect this to group two items, those that are less and those that are greater than 50. I'll click save and I'll click run. And what we'll notice here is that that's exactly right. I have two arrays here, one that's going to have items that are greater here than 50 and items that will have things less than 50. So just another way to use this grouping array function. I love it. I'll select my add function. I'll go to my data manipulation, my array folder again. And this time we're going to be dealing with difference and intersection and union. Now, some of these are already filters, but now we don't need to include filters within our workflows. We can go ahead and do it here in one particular function. I'll select my difference. And what it's going to do is it's going to return the difference of values that are found in the first list, but not in the second. I'll write a new array out. And this array, I'll make it one, let's say two, four. That four is pretty different. I'll include it with filters and I'll go to this new array and well, I'll pass in the array that are my inputs one, two, and three. I'm going to be using the, this value as what's being compared and I'll go ahead and click done. And then I'll click run where we can see, well, we've just returned the difference between these two arrays in a new array. So 
here we have four because, well, four was in the first array, but it wasn't in the second array, which are our inputs. We can go to our out array data manipulation arrays again to find kind of the opposite, find shared values here between two arrays. We'll go ahead and pass in the array that we've written out. We'll write it out again, one, two, and four. And then we'll pass in that second array. That'll be our inputs. I'll click done. And now we're going to have all of the similarities found between these two arrays. One and two are both present. Three and four are not. So one and two is returned in a new array. Pretty awesome. We have one more, and that is going to be our union. So let's go ahead and add a function, data manipulation, arrays, and scroll down to union where it combines two arrays and it's keeping only unique values. So yet again, we will write that custom one, two, four array out and then pass in our array of one, two, and three. And check out what happens here. The union is going to go ahead and bridge all of those unique values together. It brings over just a single one and a single two, even though one and two are present in both of those arrays. So here we have an array list of one, two, four, and three. It is all of the unique values. We can apply that filter here if we want to go ahead and have it sorted by returning to our output, adding a filter, typing sort and then specifying the type, which the type here will be a number, ascending, true or false, click done, click run, and now we have an ascending array. Here, all together, are the different types of array functions that we've just introduced to help you with your workflows. That's how you use the newest functions for array manipulation inside Xano. We hope you learned something, and of course, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those in the section below. You can reach out to us within your instance by clicking the support icon. And of course, if you have any problems, reach out to the community where ourselves and other community members are there to help. If you'd like to see anything built as well, make sure to leave some suggestions in the comments. Can't wait to see what you do with these newest functions, and happy building.